I'm Simon Beckett, I'm a, a novelist. The idea for, for David Hunter came about when I used to work as a freelance journalist uh, and I was commissioned to write a story. I went to the, uh, the, uh, the body farm in Tennessee um, and did a, um, stayed there for about a week following American police officers doing uh, crime scene training. Uh, I, I know some writers uh, will, will get the idea, say, for the first line and just wing it from there and just not know what's happening. Uh, that, that terrifies me. I hate that idea. I like to know where I'm going because then I can write towards it, uh, which sounds, that might sound a little silly, but um, if I know what the end point's going to be, I can introduce um, plot elements and twists and clues, if you like, that sort of thing beforehand. That don't mean anything necessarily at the time, but then become more evident later on. Uh, having said that, you find that no matter how carefully you plan things, it's always changed as soon as you start writing and as soon as characters flesh out and become, you know, take on personalities of, the, of their own, which always happens um, because, you know, the best plan in the world, um, when you start writing things, you branch off on, you know, little tangents and things, things occur to you as you're going along, uh, things don't work out. So it, it constantly changes, but I do like to have uh, uh, as, as much of a plan as I can. Yeah, my new book, Stone Bruises, it's, uh, I, I was, um, took a break from the, the David Hunter series um, and it's uh, what's called a standalone, it's just you know, it's a one-off novel. Um, it's an idea that I actually had uh, quite a few years ago now and I, I could never quite, you know, knew what to do with it. Um, and after the last David Hunter novel I, I thought, well, okay, I, I, the ideas for that started coming. And it's much more of a, uh, a psychological thriller, I suppose. The David Hunter novels are more forensic crime thrillers. This is much more psychological. Sean's, um, at the start of the book, uh, we see him on the run in France. We don't know why. He's a young Englishman. Um, he abandons a car. He's got blood, you know, the car's got blood, blood stains on it. He's got blood stains. He's in a real state. Um, we don't know anything about why. Um, and he becomes injured while he's in rural France uh, and ends up, find, w wakes up and finds himself on a, on a very isolated farm. Um, I'll not say too much about it, but I like the idea of Sean is, is looking for, for various reasons which become apparent during the course of the book. He's looking for somewhere to hide so he can you know, sort himself out. Um, we, at this point we still don't know what he's running from but it's obviously something pretty bad. He thinks the, the farm is a good place to hide but obviously as he stays there he realises that the, the farm inhabitants have got secrets of their own and they're potentially more, more dangerous than the one he's running from in the first place. The, the ideas tend to come quite slowly. Um, the information, I, I generally uh, give either Tim or other experts, you know, Professor Tim Thompson, um, uh, a, a pestering email and make a nuisance of myself looking for, you know, little bits of uh, background detail and, uh, and what would happen in what kind of scenario. The second David Hunter novel, um, which is called Written in Bone, uh, was about um, fire deaths and Tim's name was suggested to me as uh, somebody who'd done quite a lot of work in that field. I think the development of the kind of the successful research group that we've got has come uh, about through a combination of things. Partly it's this link that we've developed between the research that we do and the practice that we do. So all of our research is applied. One of the things that, that you know, we've done, we've had, we had a great idea about what might work in terms of uh, developing a method of, of non-contact scanning for bones and other forensic evidence. But it's, it's quite, it was quite risky and you know, that's the sort of thing that takes a while to develop but by having that support there it gives us the, um, not just the kind of financial ability to, to invest in that but also that kind of, um, that kind of reassurance that people think mm. that what we're doing is, is worthwhile. Um, the support from, from, from Simon that we've had gives us um, the freedom, it gives us a bit of a cushion that we can try things that we wouldn't have been able to try um, otherwise um, and one of the reasons that we're successful is because the ideas that we've had we've been able to follow through and, mm. and make work. To be honest it's, it, you know, it's, it's very it's gratifying it's quite you know humbling as well really because um, I write about it but in just in a fictional sense and coming and seeing um, you know things like the, the, the scanner and things like that and um, it's great. It's uh, it's it's it's, a, it's good thinking that I've, and I know it is only a you know a 
contributing in a small way, but it's, uh, it feels really good to think that, you know, well, it's, uh, I'm helping out to some extent. There's, I mean, I think there's, there's a very clear kind of thread between the uh, support that Simon's given and then the work that our team have done in, in places like Chile mm. and out in Baghdad at the moment and in Cyprus, these areas where they've got these um, really kind of difficult and troubling cases of, of mass violence. And this is where we kind of, we're able to kind of actively become involved. And there's a direct link between those two things, so definitely. I think readers are becoming more sophisticated. They do appreciate more um, authenticity and the fact that you know the science isn't made up. So being able to introduce that into the, into the books, even in a small way, uh, it helps me as a crime writer. I feel that it uh, it improves the books, it helps the stories, and it's you know it's, it is something that I feel does make make a big difference. I'm writing about a forensic anthropologist, so I think it's the least I can do is to try and you know help even in a small way to. Um, to further in, um, research in the field. I think it's, uh, um, I'm, I'm glad to be able to do it.